Hello and welcome to this webinar on how to read food labels for a PKU diet. So this webinar is aimed at adults with phenylketonuria or PKU. It is for information only and please speak to your dietitian for tailored advice for yourself. My name is Louise Robertson and I will be taking you through this webinar today. So why is it important to read food labels? Well, you need to know what you are eating, you need to know how much protein or phenylalanine you are eating, and you need to use that information to be able to calculate your protein exchanges. One of the main things we need to look at on the label is the list of ingredients. So if the food has two or more ingredients, then it must be listed as ingredients. There are some foods that are exempt from this, such as fresh fruits and vegetables. Ingredients are listed in order of weight. The main ingredient will be listed first and the smallest ingredient will be listed last. So for example, here are two ingredient lists of two jars of tomato sauces. So the top one, you can see the main ingredients is tomatoes because that appears first. Then we have tomato paste, carrots, onions, red pepper, sugar, leek, salt, sunflower oil, modified maize starch, acidity regulator, and herb and garlic. They will be the smallest amount in there. All these foods are listed as free in a PKU diet, so this tomato sauce will be fine to have. So if we look at the second ingredient list below, which is also a tomato sauce recipe, we can see that the main ingredient is tomatoes, but the third ingredient on the list is fresh cream. Now we have to count cream in the PKU diet because it contains protein, so there must be quite a lot of it in there because it's only the third ingredient. So if we scan our eyes along, we can also see cheddar cheese and we can see milk here. So we'll need to check the protein content of this label before deciding how much we need to count it as exchanges. So here is an example of a food label. By law, all foods have to declare per 100 grams or per 100 mils how much energy, fat, carbohydrates, fiber, protein and salt is in the food. Some labels will also tell you per portion as well. So the main one we want to be looking at is protein. And we can see per 100 grams there are 3.1 grams of protein in this product per 100 grams of product. How do you calculate protein exchanges from a label? So to work out a one gram protein exchange from a label, we need to do a calculation. Now this is 100 divided by the amount of protein in 100 grams, and this will give us one exchange. Now I can't do that calculation in my head, so I would get my calculator out. So looking at the same label, we can see that per 100 grams, there is 3.1 grams of protein. So we do the calculation 100 divided by 3.1 and this gives us 32.25. Now this is a very precise number so we will round it to the nearest whole number. So this is 32 grams of this food is one exchange or one gram of protein. Now are the labels for a cooked or uncooked version of the food? So usually the values are for the food as sold. Now this would be true for bread or biscuits or crisps. But if the instructions have been given on how to prepare the food, such as dried rice that needs to be boiled, frozen chips that need to be put in the oven or frozen peas that need to be boiled, then the value should be for the prepared product. So you can see here on this rice label, it actually says typical values per hob cooked. So it should say on the label um, if the values are for cooked or not. So we can see per 100 grams, once you've cooked this rice, if you weigh out 100 grams, then it is 2.8 grams of protein. So if you don't want to do the calculation all the time, then you can get these ready reckoners and this one is by the NSPKU. So if you looked at your food label and you found there is 3.7 grams of protein per 100 grams, you would just go along here and you would know you would need to weigh out 27 grams of that product to be one exchange. Now what about per portion? Now first of all, we would need to check if we need to count this product or not as exchanges. 
So we would check in the per 100 gram section if the food needs counting. So we would look per 100 grams of this packet of crisps is 2.5 grams of protein. So this is over 0.5 grams of protein per 100 grams. So we do need to count this as exchanges. Now we need to check what the portion is. So if we look on this packet of crisps, it says this pack contains one serving. So then we can go up here and it says per 16 gram pack. So we know that this is one serving and we go down and we can see the protein is 0.4 grams per pack. Now we wouldn't round this to the nearest 0.5 or one gram. So this packet of crisps contains 0.5 grams of protein, which is equivalent to half an exchange. And again, for the second packet of crisps, per 100 grams, there's 5.4 grams of protein, so we need to count it as exchanges. We can check that this packet contains one serving. We look at the serving here, and we can see that the protein is 0.9, so we'll round that to one gram, or one exchange, so that packet is one exchange. Now, you need to be a little bit careful. Sometimes um, if you're looking at a packet of crisps that is more than one serving or it is a grab bag, check what it says a serving is because quite often grab bags are two or three servings per pack. So for more information on which foods to eat, then download the NSPKU dietary booklet from nspku.org. Please also speak to your dietitian. And thank you for watching.